So UFC 301 is round the corner, and this is proof that the UFC is panicking about what to do on UFC 301 because they have just made one of the weirdest title fights in UFC history. This might be the weirdest title fight in recent UFC history. Of course, we used to have fights where Ultimate Fighter winners would get title shots before, but since then, this might be one of the weirder title shots we've ever seen. Champion Alejandro Pantoja will defend his belt against number 10 in the world, Steve Ursig. That is a title fight that will take place in the UFC 301. As of right now, main event of the pay-per-view. Let me just tell you that again a bit clearer. As of right now, in this billion-dollar company known as the UFC... The main event of their UFC 301 pay-per-view is Alejandro Pantoja versus number 10 in the world, Steve Ursig. Now, we all knew that there was a mess in the flyweight division. And in today's video, we're going to go through a lot of things. We're going to go through some recent additions to that UFC 301 card. We're going to look at the current existing UFC 301 card and laugh at how terrible it is. We're also going to talk about these two men, Amir Albazi and Mohamed Mikhaev, who got passed up for the title shot against Alejandro Pantoja in place of number 10 in the world, Steve Ursegg, who just beat Matt Schnell. Welcome to the club. Um, and then Mohamed Mikhaev mentioned on Twitter that he didn't get... Like, he was ready to fight at UFC 301, apparently. And they gave it to Steve Ursegg instead. And then we're going to make the UFC 301 main card as best as we can possibly make it in an ideal world. Okay? That's what we're going to do at the end of the video. So there's a lot to discuss. But this is crazy. First of all, people in the comments, let's look at the immediate reaction. The most illogical matchup, Mikhaev is probably crying somewhere. Now, I don't know why... Any one of the fan base wants Mikhaev to get rewarded for his performance against Alex Perez. It's weird how that works. Sandhagen not got no respect. Other fighters that have had equally, like Gamrot, get zero respect for any win he ever gets, ever. <laughs> Gamrot gets no respect for any win he gets, ever, and everyone trashes him. But Mikhaev does that shit to Perez for three rounds. And everyone's like, what? Passing him up for the title shot? Everyone would be laughing right now if this was Gamrot. Either way, the reaction to this has been bad on, on uh, social media. Um, I'm going to move my face out of the way again so you guys can see. Most random fight ever. No joke, who the fuck is Ursegg? Now, if you don't know who Steve Ursegg is, you aren't a UFC fan. Like, he's number 10 in the world. He's a talked about flyweight prospect. Let's not act like this is some Edgar Chayrez stepping up on short notice. I understand it's weird, but still. Marlon Vera's title shot was undeserved. Urseg, I KO'd Matt Schnell. <laughs> Why are people complaining about Urseg? He's a hell of a fighter, great prospect. We got Floyd Mayweather here. Hell of a fighter. I'm far from a casual fan. I'm far from a casual fight fan, and I've never heard of that Urseg in my life. You are a casual. F I hate when people do this. Anyone else? I'm no casual, but who the fuck is number 10 in the world, Steve Ursay? <laughs> like, you're a casual. Like, don't do that shit. You know what I mean? Um, number 10 is comical. I'd rather see him fight O'Malley. Mikhaev is 6-0 and with four finishes in the division. This makes no sense. Why would they reward Mikhaev for his performance against... Uh... That's why they haven't given him it. At first, I thought, you know what? Who have they skipped out for the title shot here? Let's just go to him right now. They skipped out Amir Albazi, who's number, what, two in the world or something like that? And then Mohamed Mikhaev, who's number seven in the world, above Steve Ursegg, who's number 10. So I thought, hmm, what's the similarity here? It's probably because of Ramadan as to why these two guys aren't fighting for the belt. But allegedly, according to Mohamed Mikhaev, he was ready to fight for it. He said, uh, got more finishes than Ursegg's fights in the UFC. Just facts. Then someone said, uh, and then um, someone replied, oh, Charles Johnson, who's now bum-licking uh, Mikhaev because he beat him. 
said, Charles Johnson said, I'm telling you, Pantoja asked for him, I'm sure. This has champion matchmaking all over it. Should have been Kai coming off a loss. Elliot? Tim Elliot? What are you talking about? Or Mikhaev next, according to the Rankins Health and Who's Not Booked. What? What you talking, Boo? You mad feel of a thing. Lilza, either way. It goes down to Ersteg because Mikhaev's fucking boring as fuck. And that's apparently now the only reason. You know, he says, agreed, bro. Um, and he's, people said nobody liked that decision versus Alex Perez. And he even said, I don't like it myself, but a win is a win. It's true. But I think this is literally the UFC just basically saying, um, let me know if I'm wrong or not. Them giving it to Steve Erseg, number 10. And this is so funny, by the way, because Erseg is like, I don't know if he actually has a single bit of a fan base. Like, he's one of the most unpromotable guys right now in the UFC. Um, but Steve Erseg has been given the shot because what I imagine is, on that card where Steve Erseg KO'd Matt Schnell and Mohamed Makayev did what he fucking did against Alex Perez, which was disgusting to watch. On that card, basically, um, I'm sure the UFC were thinking, right, we've got a, a title shot available. Let's see what flyweights prove that they want a title shot. And although it's Matt Schnell, Alex Perez's knockout cold win kind of proved that he wanted a title shot more than Mikhaev's win did. Now, it might have been a lower level win than Mikhaev's, but not by far. Perez and Schnell, similar level flyweight. And uh, this basically got treated like a contender series card would, with who would get the contract into the UFC. Regardless who's known to be better, they would have given it to Steve Ersek on the contender series over Mohamed Mikhaev based on the two of their performances. And another argument I want to make, even though it doesn't make any sense and they... They should have just waited, but this just goes to show how bad UFC 301 is, which we'll get to in a second. Although they should have waited, um, UFC 301, what am I even saying? Although they should have waited, this goes to show how desperate they are. They needed Pantoja on the card. Or what else do they really have? I'm sure they're thinking in their mind right now, because if Pereira can't make the quick turnaround, which he said he wanted to, he wants to fight on 300 and 301, this is the only title fight they're going to have on that card, which is absolutely abysmal. But another reason why I think they gave it to Erseg and why they thought fans would maybe appreciate it going to Erseg more is because Erseg has never been shown that he doesn't belong yet. Hear me out when I'm saying this. In terms of promoting a title fight on like a chance for Pantoja to be upset because he's beaten nearly everyone in the division. So it's pretty tough to find him a title shot right now. Some of them, he beat Roy Val twice, Moreno three times. Like, he's beat a lot of guys in the division. He's beaten Manel Cap. He's got great wins in the division. Why did they go Erseg? Because he hasn't been shown that he's hit his peak. The Perez performance for Mikhaev, it wasn't just that it was a boring performance. The problem with it was that Mikhaev basically showed us where he's at because... A couple more shots for Perez in round three, and Mikhaev is done in that fight. So in my opinion, who am I trusting more as a live dog against Pantoja? I'm trusting Erseg. And you know what? I'm going to go one further. I might pick Steve Erseg. <laughs> Just saying. Style-wise, I could see him catching Pantoja on the chin. But I'm not going to go off of a Matt Schnell performance. I'm going to do my research. I don't mind this upset pick, all I'm going to say. Um, but yeah, that's why. And I guess Amir Albazi is going through Ramadan, so they didn't go with, uh, go with him. Um, but we've got some matchups that have been added to the card. We've got Mikel Pahir versus Mahmoud Muradov. They've added this to UFC 301. They need some fights on there. I knew they were going to add Mikel Pahir on there, but I was thinking to myself put him against like a ranked opponent or put him against like an unranked opponent who has a bit of a name. Mahmoud Muradov really doesn't, um, but they've made this matchup. I don't think this belongs on the main card. That's just, that's what I'm going to say. They've also added this, Karolina Kovalkiewicz versus Yasmin Lucindo. I don't think this belongs on the main card. Hopefully it doesn't end up on the main card. Um, so far we've got on the UFC 301 card, we've got Paul Craig versus Kaya Barajo. 
We've got Anthony Smith versus Vitor Petrina. Joaquin Silva, Dracar Close, Alessandro Costa, Kevin Borjas, Dion, Dion Barboza, Ernesta Kadakate, Joe Anderson, Brito, Jack Shaw, great fight, Elvez Brenner, Mike Tyke, Beck, Orobai, uh, Gene Silva, Willem Gomez also recently got added. So the prelims are looking pretty fun as far as I'm seeing with these additions as well. Mikel Paya, Mahmoud Muradov, and also this fight here. The problem I'm seeing is we've already got six prelims these two fights make it A. And as far as I'm fucking concerned, Paul Craig Baralho and Smith Petrino at this point don't belong on the main card of a pay-per-view. So we either need to shimmy some of those prelims off or we've got a lot of prelims. That's all I'm going to say. Because I'm going to move on to what I would make the main card of UFC 301 in an ideal world. Get Anthony Smith Vitor Petrino off the main card. Get Paul Craig versus Caio Baralho off the main card as well. And look to add these fights. Hear me out. This is how you save UFC 301. Little mini card builder video in between this video. There's videos within videos these days on the MMA Guru channel. Like the, like the video. Um, so they've got Alejandro Pantoja versus Steve Ersek. Not ideal, but I do think that the sell... <laughs> That's X face. I do think that there's something to this in like the absolute meme of this fight. Right, chat? It's getting a ton of likes. Any other flyweight championship fight wouldn't get this many likes. I haven't refreshed this post in ages. Um, but as of right now, it's got 135,000 likes. It might have even more. And it's only been out for about an hour. The novelty and the absolute disaster that is this fight might be its selling point. Like, it might go down as like a meme. It can be promoted as a meme of a fight. We've got Alejandro Pantoja versus Steve Ersek. As you'll notice, I've left the main event free. Who's going to be on the main event? Alex Pereira claims that if he beats Jamal Hill, he would like to defend against Ankalaev in the main event of this card. So this is an ideal world. What are we looking at on the UFC 301 main card? And if Pereira does beat Jamal Hill, he wants Ankalaev and he's told Ankalaev to get ready for it. Like he's, he's said his plan. I can only imagine Ankalaev's going to stay in shape and then just wait on the all clear based on the main event of Pereira versus Hill at UFC 300. And that would be epic and it would make it an amazing card regardless. We then need to add to the main card a feature fight of Jan Blachowicz versus Johnny Walker. I think this can be done. I think it can be put together. And uh, I think based on their position on the card, they might be incentivized to take this fight. Even if you know Blachowicz maybe needed another week of recovery or two uh, because he went through shoulder surgery. I saw that the shoulder was healing up pretty good as of like eight or uh, nine weeks ago. So maybe. like he doesn't. I don't see any cast on him. I don't see a sling. I, I, I don't see him you know, in any type of impaired state whatsoever. So I think he might be ready to go sometime soon. Jan Blahovic, Johnny Walker. I know Walker recently got KO'd. I don't care. Let's get him back on the card. He's used to being KO'd anyway. If there's a chin that's going to be used to rolling with it, it's Johnny Walker's chin. I've got two more fights to add to the main card. I've got Josh Emmett versus Edson Barboza. In my opinion, that's a sick fight. That is an amazing fight in my opinion. Absolutely phenomenal fight. Josh Emmett, Edson Barboza on the main card. It makes all the sense in the world, in my honest opinion. It really does. It makes all the sense in the world. Um, a legend, Edson Barboza, gets to be on the main card of a Brazilian pay per view. And um, we always see Barboza like limited to the. Uh, he isn't on any other card, is he, Barboza? I don't think he is. We always see Edson Barboza limited to like the apex. Like he's a legend, man. You can't have him fighting in front of no crowd. Give him at least this opportunity. Where if he wins, he's right into the top 10 looking for a top 5 opponent, by the way. Maybe in like a Yair Rodriguez. You never know. Or an Arnold Allen. Like there's big opportunity for him if he can win this fight. If he loses, could it be brutal? Yes, but... You give the Edson Barboza legend a chance to retire in front of Brazilian crowds. Although they're not the best crowd in the world. It's likely the ideal retirement scenario for Edson Barboza if he were to lose. And Josh Emmett is known at this point for like a vicious knockout artist after his win against Bryce Mitchell. So you can add him to the card and he will add a bit of uh, excitement for it. We move on. The meme artist himself, Paulo Costa, 
needs to be on this card. And after going through the rankings of the middleweight division, there aren't really many that can tep, uh, step up and take this fight. Other than maybe Roman Delizzi because he doesn't have a choice. That's the problem with this card. Is like It's so soon, people are going to be picky about, well, I don't really want to fight that soon. Or I just fought. Or this situation, that situation. Roman Delizzi's coming off a loss. This is a blessing of a matchup opportunity for him. If it wasn't this, it might be like an Anthony Hernandez, or which actually isn't a bad matchup for him. Um, but still, it could be an up-and-comer that's really dangerous for Roman Delizzi next. So for him, this is a big name on a main card of a pay-per-view. Sold-out arena, potentially. Who knows about the economy of Brazil right now? Um, but he's got a bit of big opportunity here. So he's more likely to just be like, yes, whatever you say, UFC, I'll do anything for this Paulo Costa fight on the main card of a pay-per-view after the shit show I just did in the main event of an Apex fight. So I think it can be Paulo Costa versus Roman Delizzi. It could even be Nasadin Amavov stepping up and taking the fight. But I think they are doing Hamanson versus Amavov. That's what I'm hearing. So um, that's probably in the works right now. Uh, so this is the main card on an ideal world. Pereira versus Ankalaev, Pantoja versus Erseg, Blahovic Walker, Emmett versus Barboza, Costa versus Roman Delidze, and then you've got the rest of the card on the prelims because Mikel Paheya versus Mahmoud Muradov don't belong on the main card. Paul Craig Baralho don't belong on the main card, and neither does Smith versus Petrino. So hopefully that's how it works out. Hopefully the UFC watches this video and gets a few ideas. We'll see. Mahabin Mikhaev is very upset about this, but they essentially gave you a, state, a statement-making opportunity against Alex Perez, and they gave Steve Ersek the same opportunity against uh, Matt Schnell. All on the same card. Roy Val just upset Moreno. They didn't want that to happen. They knew they weren't going to give the title shot to Roy Val because he literally just lost to Pantoja, and he's lost twice, dominantly both times. They gave the flyweights a chance to get their title shot. And I think if Mikhaev wouldn't have had one of the worst, most boring and pathetic looking performances of all time, they would have given it to him. So he really did mess up. Uh, he really did miss out and mess up by uh, taking the fight in, in, the in the manner in which he did against Alex Perez. Even though he was shitting his pants and stuff like that. That's what messed him up, I would assume. I don't think there's anything else at play here. I'm sure they would have loved to have given it to, to Mikhaev if he would have finished Perez. But um, I think that's what they're going off of, right? The UFC's like, how do we sell this fight against Pantoja? After the Perez fight, no one in a million years is going to think that he can beat uh, Pantoja. And just style-wise, Mikhaev don't match up well with Pantoja. He's awful on the feet. Pantoja's not as good, but he's dangerous on the feet. Um, Mikhaev grapples without real domination to it. And Pantoja's got one of the wickest, wickedest jiu-jitsu games in the history of the flyweight division. So I actually think Erseg's stand-up striking single shot selection at range on the feet is what's going to be an upset opportunity for him. So I, I, I could see Erseg winning. I might even go with Erseg dumbly, just in my own head. Because I think Pantoja is very beatable. But I don't think Mikhaev is the guy to do it. Especially not the Mikhaev that showed up against Perez. And that's our recent impression of him. So, um, weird situations for UFC 301. Thought I'd cover it today. See you later. Goodbye.